What is going on, everybody? Happy Thursday, Bobby Fathom and Eric Shee Tabor. We are going to be talking about tonight's baseball slate. It's a really good slate. Not a t- not all the games. No Colorado game we have to worry about. And we've got some like a ton of guys who I could see being extremely viable pitchers and a few stacks that I think, you know, some might stand out. But like, I think you could make a really good argument for like six different stacks today, at least. Um, so I like this slate. I'm, I'm into it. And uh, Sheets, any early thoughts or before we jump right into? Yeah, the problem once again with today is that I'm uh, I'm, I'm in the, the office out here in the Hamptons, so I don't have a double monitor. So sharing the screen is going to be a little tricky. Um, OK, but well, I'll, I'll do it. But it, that, but then I can't see my my work on the other monitor. This is the OK, problem. yeah, I've got I've only got one monitor with me as well, but I can do it if you want me to. Yeah, just share the screen. Okay, one second. Yeah, let me let me pull it up and then we'll get going. Yeah. Uh, all right. But I but I, but I agree. I mean, I, I that that there are different ways you could go, kind of pitching wise. I mean, I have um, I have a favorite, which probably everybody will. Um, but but um, but uh, I think there. Are, I have one, two, three, four. I mean, seven pitchers. I can use. I mean, you know what I mean. I, I mean, at minimum six. I mean, yeah, oh, I think there. Yeah. Yeah, I think there are definitely guys you could use. I've got and, like eleven. <laughs> oh yeah, right, right. And and then as far as stacks, and well, this is like a little tease, I guess. I have, I think, two that kind of. No, nah, I wouldn't say two that stand out. I have one that stands out, and then, then, then there are a couple. So I don't know. Well, I'm curious to see if we're on the same stuff, or I'm probably just on the same stuff as the public. But we'll. We'll see it. We'll see. We'll see where it goes. Yeah. Well, let's start it off. Okay. With, uh, I mean, so this is, this is one, this is one sp- uh, great hitting spot. It looks like the weather in it's 90 degrees in Washington. Um, it's, it looks like great hitting weather, but you've also got uh, Kyle Wright, who I think is extremely viable uh, against the Washington team that we definitely can pick on at times. Uh, you know, Wright's been sort of up and down, but mostly really good all season long. Uh, hasn't been quite as effective lately and as consistent, but definitely a reasonable option. I think on this slate, he's probably going to be on the outside looking in for me uh, because I like some other pitchers better. But Atlanta is uh, pretty clearly one of the more popular stacks, and I think for good reason. I do like Atlanta here against and the, the ghost of Annabelle Sanchez and uh, whatever else Washington wants to throw at him and and. I think that, uh, that Atlanta is definitely one of the top stacks in the board. What do you got here? Yeah, I, I have Atlanta with the same gap over the next one as like the Padres have had over the last three days. Um, I, I have Atlanta as just as light years best. And, and, um, and uh, the ownership is, is obviously um, following that. So the usual, the usual, well, I would say the usual speeches, because you never know who's, who's Lewis watching this first time. So if you do agree that Atlanta's, you know, the clearly this top stack ways to play them is either with non-chalk pitchers or fading them, or you know, just not going one, two, three, four, five. Maybe fading Acuna, maybe fading whoever the most more popular guys are going to be. Certainly not go one, two, three, four, five. Maybe like a one, three, four, seven or something like that. Just because what people do is 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 they go. Um, is they go, um, they, they use the optimizer, and sometimes they'll just they'll they'll, they'll just x out seven, eight, nine, mm-hmm. and and that's a mistake, you know. Um, so you could probably get to it some Atlanta without getting too popular by doing kind of offbeat combinations, but but in the in the you know in, in a vacuum, Atlanta for me is the best stuff. Yeah, I mean you could play Harris and Duvall, and immediately I think you're off the board. I also don't think they're going to be. I think they're going to be chalky, but I don't think it's going to be like you're not talking like every player in the twenty percent owned because they're just too expensive for that to happen. If you want to use the other pitching, although Robinson Cano, if he's in the lineup, will certainly open up some. Uh, you know, that 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 twenty four hundred value will make it a lot easier to play Atlanta. So we'll see if he's in the lineup. But as of right now, um, I've got him projected in the lineup. And uh, yeah, I do think Atlanta makes a lot of sense, but I, there, there's plenty of other stacks that I like, so I don't need to feel like I need to marry myself to them. All right. Uh, this is a uh, two good pitchers that I probably am not going to touch. I think Cortez is actually probably like in play for a guy who's not going to be owned very much. Uh, there's price has finally dropped. It's Cincinnati after all. Um, I'm, I'm open to, to, to Cortez. I'm, I'm open to Cortez and Castillo if you want to know the truth, but I probably am going to end up fading both of these guys and doing nothing in this game. How about you? Yeah, so I think that um, 
Castillo and Cortez are are on the out are both of them are on the outside looking in, but I don't think by that much. Nope. Um, uh, I have Cortez. I, I actually have Cortez as very as probably close enough mm-hmm. uh, to be to being in the, in the top. Um, not 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 near like real you know, Redon Corbin Burns area, whatever. But 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 I think that um, that uh, you probably have a chalky SP two that we'll talk about that maybe you could use Cortez as a sort of a pivot off of that. Um, one of the one of the few things I did last night that worked uh, that just didn't couldn't, couldn't the right pairing is I actually did play some reds yesterday. Um, and then they, uh, they'll, 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 they'll break people's hearts sometimes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so, uh, I, but I do like Cortez as kind of a secondary one. Don't think I can quite get to Castillo. I mean, he's going to be, listen, you know, really low on. 5% on Castillo. But you know, you know, playing at at New York, at New York, it's the Yankees, and it's it's hot here. Uh, I can tell you that. Um, uh, probably, I probably don't, don't don't quite have it in me to do it. Yeah, I, I don't think I'm going to do it. But I certainly like on another slate. Uh, some of the ones we went over last week, I, I would absolutely consider both these guys. Like I would have, I would have had them at the top of that list that we we had no pitching, but. Uh, I think they both have upside. So they're definitely guys who I'll use maybe for the lottery, not so much in the uh, single entries or any other form, because we have guys like this. Um, Gaussman and Toronto. I have Toronto as one of my priority stacks. And what's odd is early on, I don't really understand why they aren't showing up as more popular um, as of right now. I, I really like Toronto here. I think that they're one of the better stacks on the slate. They're a little bit more affordable than Atlanta is. And I just don't think the ownership is going to them nearly as much as I, I at least their early projections, as much as I would have thought coming into the slate. So I have Toronto as a priority stack for me, along with Gaussman as maybe my third or fourth best pitcher. But I don't, I could argue him higher or lower very easily. There's a lot of guys in that range that are very similar to me. Yeah, I have him in the top four um, as well. Um, and. Boy, oh boy, with respect to stacking, it's funny. I I, I have Toronto right there. Um, I, I have a whole, I have like, I don't know, three or five, you know, anywhere of like five teams like that, that I would use to pivot off of Atlanta. And Toronto is is one of them. Um, I'll just kind of leave it at that. So I'll probably, I'll probably end up playing. Yeah, that's where I, that's where I'm at right now. I, I do think it's a really strong play, but the, yeah, and there's just a lot of guys we're going to go through as we go through this. How do you have Toronto? Did you say? I have them in a bunch of secondary stacks. I mean, I have them alongside of, um, and, and I don't know if we have if we talked about the Yankees um, when we were talking about that game. Oh, but, I didn't talk about the Yankees, but you could. Yeah, go ahead. Shoots. I mean, I don't quite, I don't quite, I don't quite have the Yankees in that in that in that group, but I have Toronto alongside of say Dodgers and Houston and and a couple of teams like that. Yep, makes sense to me. Um, I have them a little bit ahead, but not not a whole lot. So. All right, uh, Boston and Tampa Bay. Uh, this is a spot where I think if you wanted to use a cheap pitcher that you can absolutely make a case for Crawford here. Um, and I think that he's going to be unowned. He's 6,800. He's actually been, I mean, as you can see, he showed a ceiling. He just, he was dominant against this team last time he faced them. Now, you know, that goes against my usual playing the guys when they face the team twice in a row. He's, play, he's faced them twice so far this year, though put up 16 and 30 in the two, in the two starts. Uh, they've stretched him out a little bit. His pitches are, he's throwing in the mid eighties now. And um, I mean, in terms of total pitches, maybe even has some room on that. If things are going well, I think it's interesting. Um, I think he's a really interesting play and I don't think he's going to get much ownership. So I do think that Crawford is one of your cheapos. If you're considering that you may not need it, but at the same time, he might be, he has, you know, 25 plus upside. So he could actually be one of the higher scoring players in the slate. And it wouldn't surprise me. Uh, I'm not using Rasmussen and I'm not playing any hitters in this game. How about, oh, you know what? Let me rephrase that. There are two really cheap plays that I'm going to use in this game. And that's going to be Aranda and Walls, but they will be one off as fillers or maybe a two man between the two of them at second base in short, because I think that they're just so crazy cheap. I don't mind taking some shots there. Uh, what do you got here, Sheets? I definitely like Crawford um, I, I, as a low owned play. Um, mm-hmm. I, I think it's totally reasonable. 
Um, and I have, I have them ranked pretty, pretty respectably, if you want to know the truth. So, so I do like that. And um, not getting to Rasmussen, and I'm not getting to the hit, hitters either. So I basically agree with everything. All right. Um, let's get over to uh, Detroit and Cleveland. This is another high upside play. Uh, I want to make one of my favorites on the slate is going to be Tristan McKenzie. I think there is massive upside against this Detroit team for him. Uh, sort of struggled there for a little bit in some tough matchups, but uh, we know he's got a ceiling. And I think at 8,300 against Detroit, he is extremely viable. He and Gaussman are really close neck and neck for me. Uh, but I do like McKenzie quite a bit at 8,300. And I like a little bit of Cleveland. Uh, I'm not probably going to fully stack any, any Cleveland, but I think that they make sense as a secondary stack, especially uh, Jose Ramirez is going to be crazy popular, but I, I do like him. Uh, you have Nolan Jones, who's 2K, who's going to be popular. I think, I think Cleveland ends up pretty popular here. And it's a little cooler. It's 75 degrees in Cleveland today. It's still a decent hitter's park and everything, a little wind blowing in from center. But uh, I think you could, you could argue for Cleveland. I just think at this ownership, at the ownership that they have, I'd rather go other places. Um, I'd rather play Toronto and prioritize that. But, they're, but they certainly are affordable and they make sense as a stack or at least fillers. Um, I'm just not going to stack them probably. I would watch the, um, the ownership on McKenzie um, uh, just because I, I have him as part of the top four. I got Rodon, Guzman, McKenzie, and, and the other one. And, and so if I'm getting to that, I'm sure that other people are too. I mean, I only have him at 20 20 percent right now um ownership but just i just just make sure i mean because people i don't know people like to play them but people like to play against detroit but you know what i mean with with, with other options i i don't think he's gonna be crazy you know um, yeah i think i think somewhere around 20 is probably about right yeah but i like that and and you're right i think cleveland is gonna get um gonna get ownership they do rate they do rate to be you know pretty good points per dollar and things like that so um, uh, when I rank the stuff literally by value, they, they show up to be the top, the top dogs and they have, you know, they look pretty good and just the raw points too. So they're definitely, they definitely look to be a good play, but again, I would rather, I don't say rather, but I think there, I think there are other lower owned options that have just as good of a chance. Um, so, so I like them, but again, I would not play Cleveland nor Atlanta with, with, with chalky pitching coverage. Yep. Um, I totally understand that. Um, yeah, I, 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 I'm still struggling what to do with McKenzie myself. Um, this is a spot here where I'm actually a little surprised the Dodgers run total isn't a bit higher. Uh, so I, I, I think this is a good spot and I think that, you know, they, they, they keep doing their comeback thing lately, but I do like the Dodgers. Uh, I have them just behind uh, Toronto for me, but I, th I think that they're, you know, you could easily make a case that they're ahead of Toronto. They're expensive as well. And they're not going to be popular uh, as of right now is from what I'm seeing at all because of the pricing. So I, I do like the Dodgers. And if you get lamb in there, you've got the cheap option and whether, you know, at 2,400 to, to make a stack work. I don't mind if you want to stack it any which way, but I do think that you can stack it more straightforwardly today. It's not like there's like one bat. I feel like I need to have against Hudson but I do see him as the type of pitcher the Dodgers could explode on, um, especially if he has trouble with his control. That's just a recipe for disaster. Um, obviously for the Dodgers, it's a much, it's a big stadium upgrade every time they play in most of these places, but it's 92 degrees in, in St. Louis. And I think you could see some pop here. So I, I do like the Dodgers as a, as a full stack or as a, a secondary stack. Uh, I'm very high on them, but a little higher on Toronto and Atlanta at the moment. One thing that I, I again, I promised I was going to do this year, which I, which I have not, is I have this thing that I kind of work on where I, I, I rank stacks, but combining like their chances of doing it, you know, getting there plus as a function of their ownership. It just I haven't really finished it yet. So that's why I don't want to put it up there, but I'll, I'll start, I'll start like going over like at least my top teams as far as their rankings go. And, and Dodgers are one of the three teams that I like given that, given the combination of ownership and upside. So I do like the Dodgers. Um, and um I guess, I guess that's pretty much it. I mean, I, I don't really have interest in the, any of the pitching here. So I, I like the Dodgers a lot, actually. Yeah. And um, if it was a different slate, I would, and we needed to find something weird, I would actually suggest taking some St. Louis bats uh, against Anderson. Uh, pitch profile wise, I could see both, especially Goldschmidt and Arenado, I think make a lot of sense. Um, 
All right. Not a great, not great hitting weather. And, and somebody's going to have to figure out, help me figure this one out. Why is other than the fact that he's struggled a little bit recently, nobody's going to play Sonny Gray at 8K and we're all going to play Tristan McKenzie. I mean, is that, am I, am I right about that sheets? What do you think? Well, you're, you're right that that's what's going to happen. Um, I think Sonny Gray is a really good tournament play against a White Sox team that has really struggled with right-handed pitching. And I think that he is interesting and I don't have any interest in either of these stacks. Uh, it's partially, you've got 10 mile an hour winds blowing in from, from left center. Um, sorry, from right center. And that's good enough for, to keep me off of stacks that I wasn't all that crazy about anyway. Uh, I do think you'll see some ownership on Minnesota. I'm very happy just to fade it and move on. What about you? Yeah, so the, the White Sox have been the source of a lot of players, uh, DFS players, pains um, in the last like week or two. Um, and they've, they've had, let's say, put it, they've had much easier spots and they have not been able to really do it. Um, so maybe you're right. Maybe, uh, maybe they're just not hitting that great. And maybe Sonny Gray is, uh, is, 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 well, it's definitely sneaky, right? Because like you said, it's like a, almost a direct pivot off of, off of McKenzie at that same price. And he's mm-hmm. going to be, I mean, significantly what, lower 8%. I mean, something, somewhere around there, whatever, probably whatever, whatever it is, it's going to be. It's going to be low. Um, so I have him just um, just below the guys we've spoken about already. Um, I might go all the way down to Crawford for that. Though. I like the I like the Crawford play. Um, yeah. But but uh, in, in addition to that, um, it's interesting that you say that the um, the weather is going to be poor because I didn't say poor. I, I, it's just blowing in from 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 right center now people say that you know it doesn't always change the totals as much but the thing is it's how are you how do you want to get your runs you want your runs by stolen bases and home runs in dfs and it's just harder to hit home runs when there's 10 mile an hour winds blowing in yeah so the the reason i mention it is because the the other of the three teams that uh, that have that kind of leverage score for me is actually minnesota um so i'm gonna have to revisit that to see if i really want to you know you know stack into the wind so to speak Mm -hmm. um but uh, yeah, I think Gray is a pretty, pretty reasonable low ownership uh, play. And like, you know, listen, like you said about McKenzie, he's had his struggles. You know, he hasn't been perfect this year. Um, yep. So if he ends up getting the high owned, I mean, uh, I have no problem fading it. Um, but again, I, th- I think that, I think that not to speak the whole day about McKenzie, but I think there's just so many other, not so many, but there, there's enough guys that are close enough to him. Yep. that I don't think he's going to be crazy owned. He's going to, he's going to be one of those guys that's probably high owned in the big buy. Yep. I agree with that. Um, and, and I think I, I would like Minnesota. I would, I would even take some shots on some Minnesota bats if they were, if, I don't know if, if, if the, if the conditions were a tiny bit better and if they weren't going to be owned, I, as of right now, I'm showing them with some decent ownership. Oh, okay. I didn't see that. Okay. I'm off of that. Um, speaking of pitching, uh, I like both of, I like the spot for both of these guys here. Um, you have the wind blowing in for again, nine miles an hour, but in Chicago, that may as well be 15 or so, or so, uh, really low total high, high strikeout upside, especially for the, uh, Cubs. So I do like Carrasco and I know he's been a little hit or miss. I'm willing to gamble on it. And I like the matchup for him. I also think Keegan Thompson is a really sneaky if you want to go way low, double low, you could play him with Crawford kind of a thing. And I actually have an early build like that. I mean, just look at what this guy's been doing. Like maybe, maybe, maybe this is not like such a, a bad play. I understand you have some hitters in New York, but there's still enough strikeouts in the lineup and he sort of confined his way to strikeouts when it seemingly there aren't many. His only bad, his only a bad outings are Boston and New York. Uh, he had the one bad one against, against Baltimore, but since he's, he's been kind of cruising lately and I think Keegan Thompson's got some pretty good stuff. So I like both these pitchers as uh potentially low owned options as of right now, I think that they'll be, be, be low on sheets. What do you think about that? I think Carrasco is a, a, a really, really good play. I have him just below those top four. Um, you know, he'll, he'll have to get some ownership if the wind's blowing in, but it won't be much. I mean, 12%, I have 12%, 13%, something like that. Yeah. Um, so I definitely like that. I, I didn't quite get to the Keegan Thompson thing, but, um, but I, I could definitely, uh, definitely see that and i'm certainly not going to get to any of the hitting so I, I i do i do like carrasco and um and again he's the type of guy that i'll play with with atlanta for example um 
Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I think it's just cool if you want to try it because you do need to like some of these hitters are expensive today. And while we can, instead of filling in necessarily with all these two K guys that we don't know what to expect from, I'm just going to keep reiterating that I think Keegan Thompson and Crawford are a completely reasonable build. And then you can stack up all the bats you want from whether it's Toronto, the Dodgers and Atlanta. And I think that it's actually a really interesting thing. So I'm definitely going to have at least one significantly significant buy-in with that combination. All right. Um, so it was a it was a fun ride watching Martin Perez uh, do well for a while, right? It was, um, and you know <laughs> everything comes to an end. And yeah. uh, I don't know if it's like totally over. I, I still don't. I, I still think he's actually like a, a decent ish real life pitcher. I think he's at you know he's going to have some struggles here and there. Um, certainly hasn't been as good lately, but he's he's still like I don't know. Either way, it doesn't really matter. We don't need to talk at length about this. I personally am off of both of these pitchers and I'm off of the hitting in this game. Next. There we go. Now watch them score like 50 runs in that game. Absolutely. <laughs> and Perez, no, 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 no. Only, uh, only uh, Texas. Texas will score 50 runs and Perez will pitch a perfect game. There you go. Something like that. Exactly. Um, all right. Here's another low owned pitcher that I like. Uh, Valdez. I think that he is just consistently totally underowned all the time. He had 13 strikeouts against this team last time. You have no trout out there. The guy is a pretty much a pretty much a model for consistency. And uh, you know, you feel safe about his floor and people have worried about his, his upside in the past. He's shown some upside more this year. He throws a hundred pitches. Most starts. I, I am high on Valdez today. Uh, again, a lot of other guys to choose between. He probably is fifth or sixth for me, but uh, I do think Valdez is in play and I like Houston today in LA, although I'm not loving the lineup Houston's running out these days. Uh, not like a, there's one specific bat there, another expensive team, but I do think just all of these guys against uh, Detmers who s- sort of seems to walk between raindrops uh, more often than he should, but he, uh, he doesn't have great K stuff, although he's shown some upside a little bit more lately. Um, I, I just feel like this is a spot where Houston could go off, but I'm they're 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 further down, maybe my my fifth stack or so for on the slate for me. How about you? Houston's Houston's the other is the third team that I like as as a as a leverage stack. Um, uh, I don't know about the lineup they've been throwing out or whatever. And uh, one thing about Detmers is is you definitely don't know what to expect. Mm-hmm. Um, and in with that with that said, so so coming off his last game where he had six innings pitched to. Two, two, uh, two hits, one walk, seven Ks, and a 26-point uh, smashing at 6,600. Um, I perfect opportunity to play Houston as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Um, I, myself, am not going to get to Valdez, I don't think, um, just because, I like you, like you said, um, uh, I guess people don't think he has flashed that kind of upside. I, I guess I'm one of them, but, 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 but yeah, like you said, he's, he's definitely shown it. Um, yeah, I, just I mean, got, I this idea that it'd be, if they just throws like a hundred double play balls, you know? Yeah. I mean, I think that there's some truth to that, even in that he could get like, it's weird in that game where he struck out 13, he had five he walks in that game. <laughs> like, yeah. That's, I mean, and, and this angels lineup is just without, without trout is just not, is not all that scary to me. No. Um. So, no. so he's on there, but again, we have two, two great pitchers coming up in the last game here. Yep. Um, okay. So realistically, I think Burns is sort of the odd man out for me today, which feels really weird to say, because I mean, you want upside, you want consistency, <laughs> you want right. just a guy who's been absolutely awesome this year. He's probably been the second best pitcher in the national league and maybe the third best. I don't know, depending on where you, where you rank Alcantara and, and Gonsolin, but um, I, Rodon is the main play for me here. I love Rodon. I'm a little concerned that he's thrown. I think he's coming off his season high in pitches at 112. So that, that might keep me a little bit lower on him. He threw the complete game against uh, San Diego, but it's not that much more than he'll, he'll throw, but they will every now and then you'll see him. They'll, they'll drop him down in those, the mid eighties and low nineties and pitches St. Louis uh, Milwaukee does have some power, but they have some strikeouts in their lineup as well. So I really like Rodon on it's just like as a, in general as a play, but I am a little concerned coming off of the, the full nine innings and the most pitches of any start they've tended to to keep him like in the, in the nineties, a, a lot more than letting him go to 110 plus. So that's the only thing that I have against Rodon, but I do think both these guys are obviously really strong plays. Yeah, I agree. I think both of them look strong plays. I, I don't, I don't think you could, uh, I don't think you play both of them um, today. Uh, 
Now, I'm not even sure you want to. Um, uh, I, I agree with you. I, I have Rodon significantly higher though. Um, uh, and I have him as the most popular player on the slate, which makes sense. Um, just, uh, you know, a little better matchup, better price. Um, and these are, you know, like I said, these are two, these are two, two DFS studs, you know what I mean? And, uh, yep. uh, but if I had to pick one, it would be Rodon. Uh, you are any lower ownership on Corbin Burns. Um, um, but I think it's efficient. You know what I mean? Uh, so I, I, I recommend both of them. And, uh, obviously, well, obviously I'm, I'm not playing hitting tricks. Yeah, I just can't see any world where I'm playing any hitting from this game. <laughs> um, and I like both those guys. My priorities for today are McKenzie, Rodon, Gaussman, and Carrasco as my top four with the Thompson uh, Crawford pairing the, to get all the bats I want. And my my main stack are going to be Toronto, LA, and uh, Atlanta. But I think Toronto is the one I'm sort of siding with the most, hoping to get that home run upside where I get four of them in one game. and. And uh, the rest of the guys do enough for me, so that's that's where I'm at. Obviously. Yeah, like you like you said, I mean, you hit you hit it kind of right on the head. Like if you wanted to play Atlanta, you do some you do some uh, some some baloney with 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 Crawford and Keegan Thompson. That that's you know then 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 it's Oli Oli and free. I mean, you, or you could play all the all the Torontos. You play play literally whatever you want, but they really got to get there. I mean. The, the those those guys like Burns and Rodon, I mean, those are they're going to put up numbers. I mean, they're going to put up. I think they're going to put up fantasy points. Um, so you really have to make those hitters work for you um, if you're going to give up the opportunity cost of those pitchers. Um, yep. uh, I wonder if you can get away with with something less egregious, like maybe something like like a Carrasco Gaussman or something. You know what I mean? Maybe something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't you can't get everything you want, but you get most of what you want, right? I don't yeah, know. yeah, I think so. And then, you know, it's funny because we the, a stack that I'm not particularly interested in. I just was looking through the, the whole thing, and the, I'm going to end up with some Tampa Bay mini stacks by accident, just because if, mm. if Aranda does bat clean up again and Walls bat sixth, that savings allows me to do what I want pitching wise, and then I can get my my full stack in elsewhere. So all I have to do is add one one more Tampa Bay hitter, oh. whether it's Ramirez or Rosarena. And then you get your five man stack the other way. I think that's going to be a very reasonable route to go just because you get all the savings from Aranda. And oh, what, uh, what, what is, what has McKenzie been doing? Hold on. I just want to see this for a second. He hasn't Let's been see. very good. But yeah. Right. I mean, six innings, seven innings, pitch is okay. It's just, he's got a couple of. He crushed the Yankees the other day. That was, he did. Great. Yeah. He did. And uh, what do you want out of him? 20? I mean, no, 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 no. He can, he can get higher than that. I think against Detroit, he can be looking at 30 plus. 30 is a lot to ask for, but I would say 25 plus. He's only had 30 one time and that was against the Yankees. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but, but he had 28 and 29 or whatever. Right. The other time. Um, and, and again, he's a, you know, a young, a young guy with a wide range of outcomes was usually like when they get to be too popular. So if he, if he ends up getting anywhere above 25% today, I think that I probably end up looking for fading him mostly. If he ends up in that, in the, the 20, the, the, the 20 to 25, I'm just, I'm cool with the, enough to use it. Cause I do think he has a chance to, to be one of the top three pitchers on the slate. And I think you could play he and Gaussman pretty easily, or he and Rodon um, would be my preferred way of going about it. But like we said, there's a lot of options. I mean, I've got, you know, I've got, I mean, McKenzie, Rodon, Gaussman and Carrasco is preferred, but then I've got gray Crawford, Burns, Valdez, Thompson, I think Wright and Cortez are, are all completely in play. So I have no problem if the chalk goes too heavy just to jump over to one of those guys. I don't like that um, that Carrasco hasn't completed six innings in like a while. He had some tough matchups, didn't he? I, I'm trying to remember. No, nah, he was home against Miami home in his last Miami, um, And then Texas. Yeah, you're right. It's, I mean, I guess he had the two Houston ones was the ones I was thinking about, but. Um, you're right. He had Miami and Miami. and then the other game against Miami. Yeah, I well, mean, was no good. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think but you look, have to play him. Look, if you don't like him, there's plenty of other. No, guys I know. I'm just, I'm just kind of poking around. And, and let me, let me give that other guy a look. That Crawford was. What has he done yeah. anything? Yeah, he's been good. Um, uh, yeah, he's like, but basically, three of his last four games will take. 
Yeah. That's and one of them was against the Yankees. You get the bats and the pitches are, and, and he's, he's his, pitch, his pitch count is going up. So, I mean, th- I think he could throw over 90 pitches in a game. Uh, they let him, they let him get the, that long enough to qualify for, I believe the win, even though they didn't end up getting the win um, in that one game against the Yankees. Um, but yeah, I think, I think. Is he, is he a prospect or is he like. Um... He's so, yeah. So he's, he's been, I mean, I, I, I'm actually have to double check how high of a level he is. Cause I remembered, uh, them saying that he's not he's not like a, he's not a, he's not like the young young stud, stud guy but he's been you know he actually struggled in the minor leagues this year when they brought him up because they needed somebody but he's been really good so far and Tampa Bay has seen him twice that's the one thing sort of going against him for me today um he's he's not he's not a top a top level prospect but he is a guy who's you know who's fine he could, and he could eke out 50 I mean 6800 is like really I mean sort of expensive I mean especially if you're playing with my man Keegan Thompson <laughs> Yeah, I really I'm telling you I'm, that, that 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 might be uh, the sneaky winner. Although most likely we're going to see uh, Rodon on the winning lineup just because he's going to be owned by 60 percent of the field. Probably. Um. Anyway, so this should be a fun slate. I will be live at six Eastern. Sheets, I'm not sure if you're going to be there. I don't know. I will not be. Okay. I will be live at six Eastern, and we will uh, hammer out the rest of this slate. Uh, thanks to Rody for covering yesterday. Okay. Good, good luck to everybody today. Good luck, Sheets, and uh, we'll see you guys hopefully at the top of the leaderboards. All right. Sounds good.